good afternoon. I am Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply, and uh, we're doing a real quick video on our Alpha 6 Flexible Paints. Um, they started calling it leather paint at first, but then they decided to call it Flexi Paint. Uh, yeah, flexible textile and leather paint because apparently it works really well on um, things like canvas and stuff as well. So they didn't want to just put that it was leather paint because then that would narrow their market of people they could reach with it. Um, so anyway, when we first started selling it, it had this label, and now it has this label. Um, much more colorful, I guess. Uh, so anyway, it is the exact same product, but uh, just with a new label. I've been very impressed with this stuff. It is, um, it's really nice. Um, before the video, just to, you know, make sure I wasn't too shaky, I did paint a couple of sunflowers on this here belt. Okay, I tooled this belt, and um, I'm only going to paint the sunflowers, the name, and then that brand right there. Um, I'm not painting any of the, the scroll work or anything like that, and that is at the person who's receiving the belt's request, and I think it'll be really nice. Um, and then I'm also, normally when I take the time to paint something, I usually don't um, antique it. But I really want to bring down the tone of this belt since I'm not going to paint the scroll work and stuff. I want to bring down the tone of it. So I'm going to use a dark brown antique on it. And that really is going to make the paint especially pop out. But what really stinks about it is it's also going to take away some of the details that I will be painting into it. Um, not really sure how well it will focus on it. But right in the middle of each of those sunflower petals, I took some uh, focus on it. Grr. Anyway, I took some um, of a different color and mixed it with the yellow. I took some of this orange and mixed it with the yellow that I used in the sunflower petals and I just kind of dry brushed the centers of the petals and it gives it a real nice dimension of color that you, um, honestly, it's, it doesn't stick out. You probably couldn't even point it out, but it's there and it really changes the tone of things. So if you're a beginner painter, um, you might have something to learn from this video, but overall, this is a very basic and simple video on these new paints and um, what I like about them and um, how, they're, how I use them. So, quit talking, put the camera down. All right, so unfortunately, I'm shaky enough with my hands right here in front of me. So I am going to, unfortunately, um, be selfish with the camera and have it kind of close to me. As a matter of fact, you know what? I have an idea. I'll be right back. Okay, welcome to Aaron's new camera angle. You are now kind of above me. Um, I actually ordered just the other day some new uh, tripod type things that will put the camera directly over my desk going pointing down. Um, but this is a very, very shoddy um, <laughs> half-assed way of getting the camera where I need it for this video. It's still not as close as I would like it, but this is the shortest tripod I own. Um, so it's better than across the desk like you were. All right, all that being said, let's get going on this. So um, this paint works really well with a reducer. They sell a water-based reducer they sell it in the little bottle like this. This is a two and a half ounce bottle. Um, but of course, we also have the larger cans of it. And since I'm gonna be using a lot over my lifetime, I went ahead and picked up one of the larger cans. Okay, now this is their um, golden yellow color right here. Uh, unfortunately, the little color sticker came off earlier, but it is golden yellow and I love this color because unlike the other paints we were carrying before, um, this is straight up like if your school colors are yellow and something else this is the yellow that they're using i mean that is i mean it's that golden yellow color you know um sunflower yellow is what we're going to be using it for today so here's what i'm doing i'm going to in this video i'm going to paint a few flowers and then i'm going to pause the video and i'm going to finish painting the entire belt um, then I'm going to come back, I'm going to resist the belt for antiquing, and then we're going to antique the belt so that we can show a few things here, okay? But 
Um, this golden yellow works really good with the reducer. Um, as it is, you can apply it straight, but I like to thin it out just a little bit just for easier application. So I'm kind of going almost 50-50 paint and reducer. A little bit less reducer than paint, but almost 50-50, okay? I'll take my brush here and I'm just going to swirl it around until it's um, got a very consistent uh, texture to it, okay? And what I love about this paint is, especially if you're using their reducer, it will reduce with water, but honestly, their reducer is better. I'm not trying to upsell anything. I'm not trying to make you buy something you don't need. It's straight up better than water. And so I'm going to use it. Um, I used to use a lot of the Angelus paints with water. They worked fine with water, but one of the things I hated about them is they would also separate. Like if I sat here and left this alone for a few minutes, it would separate and the pigment would all go to the bottom and the water would be sitting on top. And I don't seem to have that problem with this paint and its reducer. Um, the other thing I like is it goes on extremely evenly, okay? You don't have crazy brush strokes, strokes and things like that. Um, it just, I mean, it nice and smooth and even as it goes on. Um, I'll probably coat everything twice, but that's mostly because I have shaky hands. Because honestly, for, for, the, for the most part, this paint goes on very smooth, very even. Um, I drink a lot of coffee, we all know that. And that does not help when I go to pick up a paintbrush and start putting paint on something. Okay? Now, since I am going to antique this project, I'm not really that concerned with you know getting right up against the lines where the uh, the seeds are and things like that because the antique is going to cover that area if this were a notebook or something I would do all of my shading with the paint and I wouldn't antique it and um, that's just how that would go so I'm just gonna go along here and color in the uh, the flower petals okay and I'll do this one little flower here, and then I'm going to mix up some of that orange I was telling you about and go back and go over the same flower with that orange just to kind of show you what I meant. Um, this tooling pattern was, uh, Don Gonzalez has it on his website. Um, this person wanted flowers on their belt. Uh, anybody that knows me knows I don't do custom orders anymore. Um, but this is a special thing, favor for a friend type thing, uh, so it's getting made. So, yeah. I, uh, there's two different methods of how I paint things. Something like a belt or something that's going to get antiqued and all that. I, I'm very much less careful when I paint it. Um, again, I don't have to worry about getting right up two lines and stuff because the antique's going to take care of that. But if this were um, a picture or a notebook or something that you know would get a lot of very very close attention, I would be extremely careful. I'd be doing a lot of dry brushing and um, stuff like that. Okay. All right. So I've got this one painted. It looks like it's coated pretty well. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and mix up that uh, the orange and the yellow that I was telling you about. Even though normally I would go along and paint all of these flowers with this color and then go back. This 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 belt has 18 flowers on it. So I'll be painting for a few minutes today. Um, one of the cool things about the Alpha 6 too is if you can hear it. It's got a little ball in there to help it shake up and stay mixed and all that craziness. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take a couple of drops of orange. There we go. Three big old droppy glops. Oh, and I love the flip clap caps too. These are really, really convenient to uh, try to keep the area clean. Okay. And then I'm going to do three drops of the original color, the golden yellow that we were already using. One, two, and three. Plus some runoff. <laughs> um, yeah. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to add some thinner to it. Once again, just kind of, I'm going to make this basis a little bit thinner than the other, so I'll go um, at least half and half with the thinner, okay? Spilling it everywhere. All right, so plenty of thinner in there. I'll mix that up, and like I said, it'll be just a little bit more orange than the original color. Not a lot. I'm not looking for heavy contrast. I'm just looking to kind of shade some uh, some petals. All right. Now. Again, I'm going to do this kind of as a dry brushing technique, so I've, I've taken 90% of the paint off of my brush, and I'm just going to kind of brush up the center of each of these petals. And it really is one of those things, like it doesn't make a massive bit of difference. Um, it's almost hard to see, but once the whole flower is done, it really does give it a nice, um, nice effect of, I guess, shadowing and you know, more natural looking than just a plain old yellow flower. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and go around it one more time just to get that a tiny bit more pronounced. Uh, one of the other colors I used on this is uh, Peacock. It's very, very close to their turquoise, but maybe a tiny bit more blue to it. And um, anyway, I think it'll go really well with the rest of the tone of this belt. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to continue painting a bunch of flowers. Okay. And um, when we come back, I will put a, uh, a sealant over it so that we can antique it later. Thanks. All right, so I got all these flyers painted, and I got the orange kind of dry brushed on there. What I forgot to do was, though, I'm going to paint the centers of the flowers. And again, I'm not having to put a ton of detail into this uh, because we're going to antique, and there's lots of texture there to catch antique. So all I'm going to do is take my medium brown paint. I'm going to dilute it about 50, 60 percent with water. Um, or not water, but they're diluting mixture stuff here. They're uh, thinner. Um, because I want it to really get in there and I want it to soak into those seeds and stuff and really color it up. Um, I'm also going to grab, actually, no, I don't want to dirty up another brush. So I was going to say I'll grab a bulkier brush, but meh. All right. I'll mix that up real good. I got a little bit of yellow left on my brush, but that's okay. We're going to a dark color. And I'm just going to barely knock the excess off the brush, take it over to the, the seed pods and just let it soak in. Okay. When it dries, it'll be even enough that, like I said, the antique will really give it some texture and color. I may hit each of these up twice, just depends on what it looks like after it dries. This stuff dries really fast. Like once I'm four or five flowers down, this one will be dry enough that I can know if I need to uh, do it again or not. Okay. Just like that guys um, again when I come back I think we'll be uh, putting some resist on this thing so that we can antique it all right folks did all the seed pods um, and I'm, I'm struggling here um, the person I'm making this for said oh don't 
paint the scroll work just the flowers well how about where it leads right up to the base of the flower here and the little cup underneath the flower like I I feel like there should be some transitionary phase there okay so even though the customer didn't ask for it and isn't expecting it hopefully it'll be okay with them but I just can't leave it like that so I've got some green here and I'll probably add just a teeny tiny little dab of brown so it's not just so crazy green um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it pretty strong I'm not gonna thin it very much and I'm truly going to dry brush it okay which means I'm gonna get a bunch of paint on my brush wipe it all off on something else I'm gonna start just under the flower petals at the what I would call the cup of the flower I'm sorry I'm not a flower I don't know the anatomy of a flower very well been a while since high school um, anyway, and then I'm just going to dry brush all the way down the stem until there's no paint left on my brush. So it will gently fade from green to natural leather. So that's the plan, okay? Hopefully we are not making a massive mistake with this plan. Alright, so I'm going to do five drops of that. One tiny little drop of brown. And we're gonna add just the, a little bit of thinner, like maybe 20% thinner to compared to, you know. Okay. That might still be too much thinner, we'll see. Mix that up, mix it 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 up. Add more brown. Still really green. The green just swallowed that drop of brown. So I'm gonna add two more drops. Now we're looking more sunflower, uh, you know, like the color of a stem of a sunflower. Okay. So mixy, mixy, mix it, mixy, and then it's not quite a forest green. It's brighter than that, but it's also not. Um, you know, Jersey green, I guess. Okay, mixy, mixy, mixy. All right, now I need a clean paper towel to wipe all this paint on because I don't want to get other colors contaminated in my dry brushing. Okay. Lots of paper towels. So, I'm going to wipe all that green back off this brush. Now I'm going to find my little leather coaster that I test stuff on. And like I said, right, we'll pretend this is the cup of the flower. I'm just going to start there and I'm going to go away from it. And what I'm hoping will happen is as I go away, the color will get lighter and lighter as I brush. Um, <laughs> It is difficult because this coaster's had tons of stuff spilled on it and whatever else. But there's what we're talking about is the green. Um, I should have wiped more off my brush. Okay, so wiping a lot more off my brush. And we'll do that one more again. Okay, now we're talking. Now it's just a dry brush effect. Okay, just the slightest bit of the color on there. Try to get that at an angle that it'll actually show up as green. I'm sorry. Still screwing with the lights in here, guys. Trying to make it as good as we can for you. So anyway, I'm going to dry brush the base of the flower here. And the stem away from the base of the flower. And between that and the, um, the antique bringing the darkness in, I think that'll help with my transitionary area, okay? So, yeah. Hang on, I'll show you these couple that I've done. Again, I'm not putting tons of detail into it, but I do want it to look right. Okay? So there's the two I've done. You can barely even see the effect, but to me, it needs something. So... 
I'm gonna pause this again and maybe next time I turn it on we'll actually be doing the resist. Alright, so I did all that talking about uh, oh when I come back we'll resist, when I come back we'll resist and then I got busy on the phone with Janie and I resisted the belt and I forgot to record it. So, I apologize. So, I will tell you what I did. I used Phoebing, let me put the lid back on it. I used Phoebing Pro Resist. Okay, it is, it works great over these Alpha 6 paints. It slides right over it without erasing the paints. Um, formerly, I was a very big fan of um, RTC from V Natural, and I still think and feel that it's an amazing product. Um, we don't sell it, but it's still a great product. But my problem with it was, as a resist, is I would go over something I had painted, and it, I mean, would just erase the paint. Like, it was just made to take paint off stuff. So, I really quit using it very much because... I need to use my paints on some things. So what I did is I took a piece of shearling here, okay? And when I'm prepping a piece of shearling to use for a resist or for an antique, I give it a haircut. So I go around the corners and I cut it off at like a 45 degree angle, okay? So on all four sides we do that. And then I cut about half the thickness of it away too. And I pretend like I'm a barber. Just like that. Then I'll take it and I'll rub it on my jeans leg a couple of times, get all the extra fuzzies off and stuff like that. Because the more fuzzies you get off in this step, the less fuzzies you'll have to, you know, peel off your belt once they're sealed onto it with your resist. <laughs> all right, so anyway, and then I just took a real healthy amount of resist and rubbed it all over the belt, okay? I don't rub hard, because I'm not trying to uh, test the theory that it won't take the, uh, the um, paint off the belt, but I did do it, you know, enough that I got it into all the little cracks and crevices and things like that. So I'm going to pause this camera. I'm going to let this set up overnight. Well, I lied. I'm going to let this dry to the touch for about 15 minutes while I clean up my brushes and my paint palette and stuff like that. Then I'm going to come back and put a second coat of resist on it. Then I'm going to let it set up overnight. And tomorrow morning, the first thing I'm going to do is um, antique this belt. And I'm hoping it will look amazing. Anyway, so until tomorrow morning, we'll see you soon. All right, folks, welcome back. Um, it is now the next day. <laughs> so we are going to antique this belt. Um, the uh, resist has dried very well and cured overnight. Um, I tell people about resist, you know, it really is best to leave it overnight to, uh, to cure. Because just like painting your car, it may feel dry to the touch, but I wouldn't go taking it for a, for a drive um, until that paint really has had time to, uh, to cure. So, uh, what we're going to be using is uh, Phoebe's, uh Dark Brown Antique uh, Finish. It's the paste, you know. Love this stuff really 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 great stuff um it was a brand new can uh the, that i'm opening a lot of the time you'll find on the bigger jars not necessarily as much on the smaller but on the bigger jars even with a brand new can reach deep down in there with a stick or something and and, and stir it up some um because it's a lot thinner than it would appear uh from the surface i am wearing gloves because that is guaranteed i'm going to make a huge mess right now like, I always feel fortunate when I come out of doing this process without this crap all over my shirt and whatever else because I'm a messy, messy boy. Um, I've got a couple of paper towels I'm setting aside here because once I've wiped everything back off with the shearling, I'm going to use the paper towels, get them a little bit damp, and uh, continue to try to wipe more off. I have two pieces of trimmed shearling. Um, you know, I gave it that haircut like we talked about yesterday. And then get all the fuzzies off that you can so you're not picking them off your project later. Now, I'm going to get a healthy, healthy amount of this stuff on here. Okay? And I'm going to just slather it on this belt. Okay? Now, this belt will be lined, so I'm not really that concerned with, you know, accidentally getting some on the back. If it were not to be lined, I would put tape on the back of my belt so that I didn't accidentally get um, antique spots all over it. Okay, 
but since this one will have a nice clean lining, no concern to me. And when I say slather, like I want enough of this stuff that I don't have to worry about it missing spots. Okay, I want it to get into every little crack and crevice of this belt. Took all that time to do the tooling and the decorative cuts and all that. You might as well take the time to make sure that they're antiqued well so that uh, they're really pronounced on your finished project. Okay? So, I'm going to throw that one away now and I'm going to use a clean one and I'm going to start wiping the antique back off. Okay? And I'm just trying to get the main bulk of it off. I, uh, at this point, I am not yet worried about fine details. That's what the paper towels are for. Throw that one away, move to a paper towel, and I'm just going across the tops with the paper towel, okay? I'm not trying to get down into the cracks and crevices because that's where I want the antique to stay. Check that out. Now that's a bad A belt. We are getting somewhere. All right, um, I'm actually pretty satisfied with exactly where we're at here. So I'm not going to do what would normally be my next step, which would be I'd throw this paper towel away, take my next one, and just lightly, lightly dampen it. If you're using leather that has lots of pores and is very porous, um, this, this antique can settle in places that you don't want it to, just in the pores of the leather, and it gets kind of a, you know, it's just not clean looking. It's not nice looking. Um, so I would take my paper towel and just mist it with some water, and keep going back across it until I got the antique out of all those areas, okay? But I love it. I'm absolutely happy with how it got into the seed pods and stuff like that, how it got into these letters, these alphabet letters. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, Greg Turner of Turner Laser Works, makes these alphabet stamp sets, and um, they're not cheap, but, man, they are amazing, and they are very crisp and clean. Um, so, yeah, really good stuff. So that's it. Um, I'm going to seal this belt with, um, well, I haven't really decided yet. Probably um, Resiline, and then we're going to call it done. So I hope you, this helps some of the folks. I know that finishing projects is the hardest part um, for a lot of things, you know, how to apply the dyes and the finishes. And that is something I also I skipped out on, and I'm so sorry the dye on this belt. I took a dauber and dark brown dye from Phoebings and I just ran it right along that edge. Since that edge is raised up so much from the tooling, I was able to do it that way. Um, that was already done when we started this video, so I apologize for not showing that, that, that uh, process. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, I want to do more videos that are kind of oriented towards the beginner leather worker. Um, so if, uh, if you haven't already subscribed and that's something that inter interests you, you may want to subscribe to my channel. Thanks very much. I'm Aaron Heiser from Makers Leather Supply. Have a great day.